right now, like I said at the onset of the show, this talented lady right here, O.C. May Neal. Yeah. Thank you, O.C. Thank you. Spread Thank the you. Love Foundation. Now, I don't want to get it misconstrued. I don't want to assume anything. Can you tell me what Spread the Love Foundation is all about? Uh, sure. First, thank you for having me. Sure. I'm happy to be here with you guys thank this you. evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love yeah. your glasses, too. Thank you. Yeah. It's all, all love. All love. All love. Yeah. All, love. All, all love. All love. Spread the love. All That's spread right. Spread the love. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Spread the Love is a uh, 501c3 nonprofit founded by um, our chairman, Crazy Bone of Bone Thugs and Harmony. I know you guys are from Cleveland, so I don't need to explain yeah, who yeah. Bone is. Yeah. And so uh, we are, in a nutshell, um, established in Cleveland as a mecca in the music industry. So yeah. that's the overall vision, and we're doing that through our mission of providing programming music business yeah. education to young um, artists young artists but not just artists behind the scene careers as well People so uh, for start our youth and young companies and all that type of thing yeah yeah so uh, we have three programs and our um, flagship program which will be beginning in the spring um, is our interest to income program and that's really where our young adults 18 to 26 will be able to come in um, work with Crazy Bone in the studio and yeah, produce yeah, <laughs> pro yeah. um, the six-month cohort, and they'll produce a, a EP with Crazy Bone, and he is um, hands-on instructing uh, the youth, well, young adults. These are uh, 18 to 26-year-olds. Right. Um, actually taking them through the process of actually producing the album all the way from concept through uh, promotion and marketing and performance distribution. Yeah. And so um, not only the artists and engineers and producers in the studio, but we will also have creatives. So behind the scene business, yeah. uh, business managers, um, branding, marketing, graphic design, photography, videography, um, and uh, our main objective is to give them enough education to be able to protect themselves and their interests yeah. in, now, the, one thing in the business. One thing you said, from interest to income. Yeah, I'm yeah. Here, yeah, I'm interested in this music, and I'm interested in making some bread off of it. So that's, that's spectacular. So they get to go into studio with Crazy Bone from concept to finish with a project, learn the ins and outs of the game, That's and then it. get accredited for it and get paid once the sales kick in. Yes. So huh? Wow, that's yes. awesome. So How real is that? Hey, come on, mm -hmm. Now, now, OC, you're, you're the founding president. And like you just said, Crazy is the chairman. So is it fair to say, who came up with the idea? Did you approach Crazy like, Crazy, you know what? I think I can work with you and <laughs> do some things under your umbrella and your you name. Or did he s knew you from the community and, and call you up and say, OC, I want you to get down with some stuff I've been thinking about. How did that happen? Well, uh, actually, it's a little bit of all of that. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> keep it real, T. <laughs> it's a little bit of all of that. So, uh, first and foremost, I've been knowing uh, Crazy Bone and uh, uh, I've been a part a part of the Bone family tree for uh, over 25 years. So you were there from the beginning? Not from the beginning. So I actually met them um, when the All-Star Game was here in Cleveland the first time. Okay. In uh, 1997. Were you, a f were you hip to their music and were you a fan at the time? Or Yeah, when I got hip to their music, I was actually living in mi uh, Michigan at the time. Going, ah! going to University of Michigan. You heard it on the radio or somebody from you grew up with, hey girl, you know, we popping back here in the land. Listen, who we got popping? You know, or you had heard it on the radio. I no, think. actually, my mom and my youngest sister had uh, drove up to Ann Arbor to pick me up. So we were on our way doing a, a road trip to Evansville, Indiana, which is where my uh, mother's side of the family is from. And so we were in the in the car. This was in 95. Okay. And so we were driving from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Evansville, Indiana. And my youngest sister popped in the tape 
and I hear like uh, first of the month and all of that. So I'm like, <laughs> right? So I'm like, who is this? And I always been a hip hop head. So I'm like, who is this? And so she was like, this. They from Cleveland. They from Cleveland. That's Bone. You don't know Bone. So yeah, I was yeah. like, Bone. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. know. So uh, did you uh, have any funny, funny feelings that maybe down the future you might even cross paths and work with somebody? Man, this is the funniest thing ever. So. I just always felt like, so we listened to that cassette all the way to Evansville and all the way to them bringing me all the way back to Ann Arbor after the family reunion. I like y'all. Y'all some hip-hop ladies. Yeah, huh, yeah. So in my mom, of course, she listened to everything, too. So okay, you know, okay. Yeah, so oh, your mom was, was <laughs> yeah, she was bombed <laughs> out, too, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I would tell somebody when I was going to school, I would tell them I'm from Cleveland, right? And mm -hmm. I lived in Detroit too before then. And every time somebody would find out I was from Cleveland or I would tell people I was from Cleveland, the next question they always would say is, do you is, know Bone? <laughs> 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 and I'm like, do I know Bone? So I'm like, you from California, nigga, you know Tupac? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of question is that? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I always just kind of felt like, you know, um, if I was ever to go back to Cleveland at this time when I was living up there, that it was a, a chance that I could uh, meet them or I might already know them some kind of way because um, I would, you know, I'm born in raised here and you know exes have always kind of been in the streets so so what were some of the things were you active in the community doing things you know before you got with them because because i posed the question you said it was a little bit of everything all right so um i didn't know them at the time but then Fast forward to after I uh, met them and 25 years later. So actually in 2019, I was working with one of Crazy Bones artists, Lady Smoker, and I went out with her on the 2020 um, Thug Mentality Tour, the 20th anniversary tour. You went tour. on tour dates with the artist? Yes. And did you have a particular... Did you have a particular role or you was just building camaraderie or you was trying to sh show support? like? What was all that about? Because you don't, you didn't beatbox, you don't make beats. I don't know. You know. Well, I used to be a rapper, but uh -huh. <laughs> that's a long time ago. A long time ago. And actually, I just found out two years ago. My uh, DJ is the DJ at a, out at uh, USA, the skate rink. Yeah. Yeah. So at USA Skates, um, DJ that was your Ivory. Old DJ? Yeah, that was my crew DJ. Okay. Yeah. So and. Um, a couple of years ago, I had, uh, and I know we all over the place and stuff, but a couple of years ago, we were inquiring about going out to the skating rink to do some promotions for one of Cray's cannabis brands. And so when I started uh, reconnecting with Ivory and, and started talking and blah, 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 he went on my Instagram page and he was like, uh, I see you got Crazy Bone all over your page. You work with him? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. And he was like, Remember that talent show we did? And I'm like, yeah, we only did one. Yeah. We only did one and one talent show, right? Somebody was trying to get in where they fit in, that's <laughs> all. They was trying to get in where they fit in, you know? Right, so we did one talent show, and we actually tied for first place, but I didn't and even you were know. you Yeah. Okay. So I used to be a battle rapper back in high school. You used to yeah. be a battle rapper. Yeah, and then we did the talent show and uh, found out, like, it really wasn't no money in that. And I'm like... The money and who the person that paid all these people in here paid five dollars to get in here. Yeah. Like we ain't getting nothing. They getting all the money. Yeah. And then that's when my interest changed yeah. from rapping to behind the scenes getting money. Okay. So, so but I was working with Crazy Bones artists as in a management position, helping her to get out her first um, uh, uh, CD that she put out. So you worked in the capacity of a manager for this artist with Crazy Bone. How did that come about? Did you say, you know, did you just fill a void? Or it just was organic, like you were hanging around in the studio and somebody liked your work ethic, your personality, and asked you to be a part, or how did that go? Um, actually, I met her through Wishbone, had introduced me to her. Another member of Bone. Right, so another member of Bone. We got confidence in O.C. <laughs> O.C. need her, we like O.C., yeah, need her. <laughs> 
And so um, after I met her, when I got back home, I started listening to her music because he was like, uh, you ain't even get her number, did you? I'm like, no. That's what Rich said. Right. Yeah, that's all right. You know, I was he supposed really to get her number. He really to hook up with her. Yeah, so uh, when I got back home, I started uh, listening to her music and really uh, went to her Instagram and, and checked her out, and she really is a dope MC. And so I just started following her, and then fast forward to uh, later on, 2019, um, we connected on Instagram. So, you know, I used to uh, promote her music a lot or repost her stuff because all the guys repost the other guy's stuff, but nobody really want to repost a female because, number one, it's a female, and, you know, it's so. Biased. It's biased. Yeah, so it's biased. So, you know, I really thought she was dope. I still think she dope, and, um. It kind of evolved from there. So when she put out her very first CD, I was promoting her and just doing all of that, just showing love because I really thought she was dope. And she was like, she hit me up on Instagram one day and she was like, because you've been going so hard for me. She said, my she album, yeah, she yeah. said, my album is dropping on such and such day. She said, I'm going to make sure you get it first. You're going to get it a, a week before everybody else get it. So, you know, and that's kind of how it evolved. evolved. And then, um, after she, s I got the music and everything, and I listened to it, and I called her, you know, or no, that was the first time we exchanged numbers, you okay. know, and so uh, we ended up talking, and then uh, she found out that I used to manage another artist from Cleveland. Her name is Farrah Loco, and so she was like, oh, you know, I'm looking for somebody to help me get my project out, blah, 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 would you help me, and so I'm like. Let me ask you yeah. a real question, O.C. How did you reconcile going from an artist to managing artists because a lot of people feel like when they got it you know like hey i should be getting interviewed i should be getting managed i should be touring i should be doing this and that and the third but like you say you once you found the money trail you figured out i'm gonna go where the money at so was that part of your reconciliation process like you know coming to terms with like i'd rather be behind the scenes getting the money like you know how did you reconcile going from the artist to artist promotions and stuff like that well, um, that didn't happen till later on. This has just been in the last few years. So I've been approached by a lot of artists um, to help and get involved with them because I've been like behind the scenes in entertainment, but just on kind of like the kick it side. Besides the Ohio Hip Hop Awards, um, you know, helping and volunteering with them. It's like, no, I just always been around entertainment, but never worked in entertainment. So, so the going on tour, Things like that, did it prepare you for your position with the foundation right now? Oh, yeah. Actually, my whole entire life um, has prepared me to do what I'm doing right now. Like, every situation that from going to nursing school, having a degree in science and my other degrees and stuff, it's like everything, every situation, I'm just getting to a point in my life where I'm understanding what God's plan was for me because it's like, out of all the hardships and all of the, the storms and the challenges that I have overcome, um, I'm seeing now that all of that is what's needed in order to bring this, this project um, to fruition. And so. Do, do, do you and Crazy speak often? Yeah, we talk all the time. Talk all the time. Mm -hmm. And so you all together, uh, how big is the team? Uh, we have a board right now of about 13 board members. And so um, our executive board, we All have five. Yes, everybody's from Cleveland. Yes. Okay, so you have 13 members, everybody's from Cleveland, and everybody's handpicked by Crazy and yourself? or Yes, so um, everyone on the board up until this point has been appointed by Crazy Bone. So um, uh, myself um, and... Uh, his recommendations for you know his selects and then you know going out and going through my network and uh, uh, really um, contacting people who I knew had certain skill sets and connections and networks that uh, so when you brought us. your people on was it a vetting process or were you given complete trust or you know how did that go give and take you know with the people you looked into on your own without suggestion from crazy or anybody else? Did you say, hey, I, I figured to bring these people on board. Did you have to clear it with crazy? You know, of course y'all communicated, but it was trust there with 
you know, like on sports teams, new coach comes in, he don't want the same coaches, he wants his own team. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they are given leeway to bring on your guys, but some people have to answer to the owner right. with everybody they bring on board. So mm -hmm. was it that sort of thing or was crazy comfortable enough with you to, to trust in your, your decision making or what? So um, I think a little of both. So for the the individuals that I, I brought to the table and said, hey, I think this is a good fit for what we're doing and this is why. So um, with that, initially he said yes or no, he want to meet the person. You know, nobody he ever said, no, I don't want to meet them. <laughs> you know, so right, he's not that type of person. Why, because you're, anyway, you're this you know, stout businesswoman, no nonsense. Is it, is it, he sees that in you and like, he just Yeah, I don't up. know, all his friends think I'm mean. All his <laughs> friends think you're mean? That usually means no nonsense. <laughs> yeah, that I got an inclination. Well, so, mm -hmm. about yeah, no mm -hmm. nonsense. So tell me, OC, that, that first meeting that you mm -hmm. all had, I don't know if all the board members were in attendance, but I'm talking about you, Crazy, and whoever else might have been there on that first board meeting, you mm -hmm. know, what was that like and what were some of the things you discussed? Uh, well, our first board meeting, and this has been going on for three years. The foundation so, has? Mm-hmm, so we have Three a, years! <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have a 501c3 in California as well, so that was Oh, you have different branches? Yes. So ah! <laughs> we sp spread the love! <laughs> it ain't just in Cleveland, it ain't just in the land, baby! Bone thugs is worldwide. We might like to have something in Australia you keep messing for around. Sure. For sure. Okay. Uh, so, um, and really tying back to your original question is kind of how all of this got started. So from working with Lady Smoker on the tour, and I kind of saw operationally some opportunities. For yourself. For you Crazy Bone. And it would uh, amount to me having some opportunity as well. But really what I saw is some quick wins for him as far as operationally, because um, that's a part of my background. And so we started um, initially talking about some cannabis events and um, doing This was the first board meeting? This was the first meeting? No, so I'm going back okay. to how all this okay. ties together. Okay. Okay. So uh, we were talking about doing some cannabis um, festivals and um, that was the towards the end of 2019. Then the top of 2020, January 2nd, 2020, Crazy Bone called me and said, hey, oh, see, I've been looking at this property in Cleveland that I've been trying to acquire. And he said, I've been having some um, problems trying to get some traction. I've been having a hard time getting traction. Can you lead this for me? And so I'm like, yeah, well, let me look into it and blah, blah, blah. And it kind of just morphed from there. And you were able to secure the property? And so, you know, with my background, he told me what he was looking to do. And I was like, oh, well, that's my background, you know, politics and all of the, the different um, efforts, you know, that it would take in order to bring his vision to uh, fruition, which was to start a, a music academy. And so I brought in uh, D. Loran Jackson, who is the founder Those and chairman. Hard -hop awards. Yes, and he so he's our um, vice president. Okay. And so our very first meeting with Anthony Harrison, councilman Anthony Harrison, over in um, Ward is it ten now? That's ten now. So it flopped from eight, and now it's ten, and eight is eleven. Okay. So um, that was. February 5th was our very first meeting about all of this. And then our first board meeting was actually for the Ohio board was um, January on Martin Luther King Day in 2021. Can you recall some of the things you were talking about? Yeah, it was an onboarding meeting. By that time, Cray had met everybody and was pretty um, uh assured that that was the team that he wanted, the initial team that he wanted to uh, be a part of his project. And uh, our very first meeting, we went over the obligations of the board, all of the responsibilities, accountability, and um, onboarding stuff, and kind of um, a look into what, you know, what will we, what will we be doing in the initial timeline.
if, if, you, if you're feeling what we got going on, you love what we do, and you want to help, you want to contribute, do just that. Make a financial contribution. You're here at the website. You know, that means a donation. Any, ma any amount, whether big or small, it all helps to keep shining a light on the stars that we are. No love and aspire to be. So, you know, if you want to help us continue to do that for the next 17 years like we've been doing it, you know, go yeah. ahead and make that financial contribution. And, and if, I want to thank you in advance for that. So play it to that for me. I appreciate you. Right here with O.C. May Neal, Spread the Love Foundation, 501C3. Now, now O.C., uh, this is a music program just to bring people up to speed, just tuning in. Basically, you're going to be helping artists go from concept to, uh, to fruition of a project. And they're going to learn all the ins and outs about the music industry and the business side of it and then get the accreditation that they deserve for it. Am, am, am I right thus far? Yes. Sir. Okay. So now with these artists that you're going to be working with, now you said to me you've been up and running for three years. So in those three years, have you had any concrete steps towards your mission goal? Have, have any projects been... Um, come to fruition yet or are they in the mix or where you where are you at right now with the organization's uh, attempt uh, well right now we have our two other programs that we also do a spirit to love so our one program which is our uh, cultural equity program which is called you must learn and what that is is we are um, in the process of documenting Cleveland's history as it relates to uh, hip-hop culture and so I need to have a mention in that crazy. <laughs> I need to have a mention in that. You can't <laughs> Cleveland history without your boy. Come on, that's big. Yeah, you know, but if I don't get in there, I'm writing my own history, you know, so I ain't mad at nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, I better be in there too. Look, <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about? That's right, right, that's yeah, right, that's right. Yeah, for sure. Look, so uh, we are, have been getting together panels, and this is about uh, quarterly. So we have uh, panel discussion panels of trailblazers, Cleveland trailblazers from all disciplines as it relates to the culture. So um, our very first one, we had um, Sano was a part of that, DJ Johnny O. Grand Johnny O! <laughs> yeah, you, you got to have Johnny O. Y'all remember Johnny O and the social crew and all that. Yes, sir. And yes, so, sir. and uh, Johnny O is actually on our board as well. Johnny O's on the board. Great board yeah. member. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We got some heavy hitters yeah, I see, now. I see. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we serious about this thing. Okay. So, um, Oh, so Johnny O, Sano, who I don't know if you guys are familiar, familiar with, Sano is a world-renowned graffiti artist who is from all of that artwork that's down when you take the train in the Tower City and yeah. you see all that graffiti yeah. art that was um, Yeah, now that, you, now that you say that, mm -hmm. yeah, his name is on the wall too. Yeah, so him, Ranger, that. Ranger is deceased, God okay. bless his soul, but uh, Sano is world-renowned. Ranger he, from New York? No, Ranger was from Cleveland. He's deceased, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, his name is down there, too. Yeah, I've seen that. Now, wow, to now to understand the significance. That's, I appreciate that. That's okay. So for the, for, the, for the past three years, quarterly, you've been gathering up. This no, not for the last three years. That's just been going on since um, 2020. Okay. 2021. 2021. So 2020 is when we established the California 501c3. Okay. And so uh, we have, um, that is in holding right now. Craig decided he wanted to set up Ohio first. And yeah. so we are Craig, the headquarters. we love you, man. You thinking about <laughs> home first. <laughs> you thinking about home first. Yeah, always, always. Okay, yeah, that's dope. So, okay, so for the past couple of months, that's what you've been doing, getting the, get the, getting the documentary together. For, for the hip hop scene here in Cleveland. So, uh, has any other Bone members been a part of all of that or this period? Um, no, n as of uh, a part of the board, no. However, uh, Cray is working with them behind the scenes. So, on you the, know. Uh, yeah, on, on the mm -hmm. different projects. That, so, okay, so, so that brings me now to the artists you're going to be working with. What is a, 
uh, prerequisite of the organization as far as working with a upcoming artist, producer, behind the scenes creative, you know, who are you looking for and how does that process go? Because can anybody off the street come and say, oh, see, I seen your page. You know, I want to be mm -hmm. a part of it. Or they DM me crazy. Hey, I, I've been seeing stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of this. So how does that go if you're one of those types of creative, an artist, a producer, mm -hmm. a videographer, any of these things that has to do with the, the science and the culture of hip hop? You know, how does it go? Well, um, our program actually will be launching in spring, March of 2023. So we have a big year for 2023. That's everything is going down in 2023, and that is to uh, culminate hip hop's 50th birthday. So we are planning Who a said hip hop is 50 years old? Yeah, <laughs> hip hop will be 50 years old. It might be a little bit older than that. Hip hop lying. <laughs> <laughs> somebody <laughs> lying, man. Because, you know, yeah, somebody is lying. You know, now that I think about it. Not, well, you know, they accredited to uh, Cool Heart. Yeah. And he had his very first party when he started. In uh, the Bronx? Yeah. So, Coming from Jamaica? Mm -hmm. Jamaica, okay. So, okay, so, so again, what type of, what's, what's the prerequisite? Like, how, how can we get involved if we're one of these types? So, um, the only prerequisite is um, you have to have a high school diploma, GED, and be 18 years of age and be creative. So, it'll be a application process where, you know, artists and depending on what your discipline is, yeah. you'll have to submit whatever works because this is not, come learn how to do all of this. No, this, this is co come perfect <laughs> yeah. what you already know how to do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is not come learn how to work Pro Tools, you know, unless you don't use yeah, them. But, nah, you we know, can't you mess already around. have to have some body of work or somebody of, or um, unless our, our management um, individuals yeah. will, uh, may not be in the business of managing artists right now, but they have to have a sound business mind. So, okay, you know, we yeah. will have an assessments and things like that interview process. Hey, hey, crazy ain't just jumping on all y'all projects either. You got to be dope. <laughs> yeah, you might come oh, yeah. through my program and all that, but that don't mean I'm about to jump on your stuff, you know, so you can go around here and be like, yeah, I got a song with crazy. Nah, you got to be dope. You still got to bring them lyrics. You still got to be intelligent enough to go through the process and pick soak up as much game as possible. You got to qualify yourself. You gotta qualify yourself. So it's crazy chopping at the bit. Well, because it sounds to me like we weren't the only ones that kept going through the pandemic. It seemed like you all was yeah. still getting it cooking too. Yeah. And now yeah. you're really about to take off since things then subsided with that. And yeah, so um, actually the pandemic was actually a godsend because – Cray, for the first time in history, was still for like two years or at least a good year and a half. And that was how we really were able to get so much work done and so much leeway. So it actually worked in our That our brain favor. of his was working. Mm -hmm. We ain't sit and get brain. fat in the house because we, we ain't touring right now. Yeah, we ain't sit and get fat. We didn't sit around and twiddle our thumbs. We surrounded ourselves with people like O.C. May and others. And we putting we putting a move down that could pin the culture for years to come. That's right. Big shout to Crazy Bone yeah, for, for that. For sure, for sure, yes, sir. You know, so he's chomping at the bit to get to get going now since 2023 is coming up. Yes. And mm -hmm. and you you yourself as well. So um, are you gonna still be doing some of the things you were doing coming up, going on tours with the artists, building rapports, doing you know the new people, the the influx of talent you're gonna be bringing in. That's going to be doing these projects. Do you plan on, you know, participating in, in full that way too with those people? Like being involved with, I know you're going to, are you in part of the curriculum or are you you're signing people up? Or are you like you're wearing many hats? So as far as myself, I'm yeah. an administrator. Okay. So I just make sure that we dot and I's and cross and T's and everything is on board and the money is where it's supposed to to be and that is going and being used for for what it's supposed to be used right. for. 
So some of our biggest challenges is making sure that the ethics is stay on board and also, you know, conflict of interest and loyalties and things. And a lot of that, that is a lot of that responsibility responsibility lies at your feet. Yeah, so that's what I'm responsible for. It's ah! protecting the brand and the integrity of the organization. You feel any pressures? You you're dealing with you're dealing with uh Crazy Bone is you know, he's come from a platinum group. You know, or at least gold. I'm, I got a diamond. At that. Diamond, huh? Diamond. Excuse me. Yes. Oh, let, 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 excuse five me. times let me, diamond. Pardon me, uh, crazy. I, I didn't know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Five times diamond. <laughs> I mean, it's bone dogs. It's crazy. He got them lyrics. He's like one of the most lyrical out of the group. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Yeah, that's dope. So, okay. Pandemic aside. We're chomping at the bit. We're ready to get going. We got that. You're going to be in charge of the ethics and making stuff, making sure stuff goes the way it's supposed to go. Um, have we started aligning those people? Have we started finding those people that's going to be in the program? Are they starting to line up or? So no, we haven't even started. So they are lining up, but we have yeah, not. Yeah, you haven't dealt with anybody. Right. So we not haven't opened the gate on that yet. So we are still. Um, forming our partnerships because as a part of the program, um, in addition to the classroom learning, the students will also have placements, internship placements. And in so different what, labels, record labels? So with different, um, uh, for instance, for different entities. So ha! <laughs> That's big. So hold on, OC, so, uh, because you said, one thing you said in the beginning, you said from interest to Income. Income. That's so, right. so we got to line up them partners who are going to spend with us as a 501c3, who's going to fill our coffers up with the, with the fuel we need to do what we need to do. And, of course, that process has already started. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you at liberty to talk about anybody that's joined your cause to do that? Uh, yes, I will talk about one partner that's on, on deck for sure. So Microsoft is one of our major, oh, our major <laughs> sponsors and partners, I should say. And so, uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So uh, Microsoft is actually one of our, our partners and uh, has come oh. and is very uh, supportive of our program and, and um, has who, given Microsoft. No, did, did you say a name too? Because I can think of Bill Gates, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what no, I'm actually, the gentleman's name is Darrell Booker. Okay, so Mr. Dar Booker, yeah. you got vision, Mr. Booker. I haven't met you yet, but you got tons of vision, Mr. Booker. We appreciate you from the hood, Yes, man. sir. Yes, sir. So um, he's very excited about the program, and Darrell Booker is um, the head of Microsoft Black Nonprofit Section. Oh, really? So, yes, yeah, so... Um, Microsoft has a nonprofit division, and then now they have uh, launched a black nonprofit. Wow. So they specifically uh, just deal with black nonprofits. Well, yeah, you got you got a couple of organizations pivoting that, that route because you got people, grassroots people, is trying to hold their feet to the fire, mm -hmm. showing up at meetings and saying, "Yeah, y'all giving these special interest groups all this money," but then when you got people from the hood want to make moves, y'all only talking about the twos and fuse. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Where is that? Where is that? You know what I'm saying? Where is that? That's dope. So, to, 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 to as a as one of the founding partners in that Microsoft, that is huge. That's visionary. So, I gotta ask the tough question. OC, um, was it someone like yourself that went out and got that, or they took an interest? They were seeing something online and called you all up, or how did that go? If you're at liberty to talk about. It. Yeah, so it's all through relationship and networking. So um, one of our former board uh, members was actually our partner for All Star Weekend. We didn't and kick so him off the board, did we? And so. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> um, but no, no, just, you know, um, people doing growing different things. And grow up. Growing, wow. right. So they growing, and so. Um, you know, they have to move on sometimes because they have other things that come up. And, yeah. you know, everybody got to eat. Yeah. And so, you know, people have different interests and are working on different projects. So, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, they couldn't stay on the board because they have some other interests. Yeah. And so, you know, 
but we're very grateful for the, the time and the commitment that we um, had together, right. you know, and we did, uh, out of that relationship, that's how we met uh, Darrell Booker from Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 that, that's, that's cold-blooded right there. So, okay, so what do you got coming up next as far as the foundation that, you know, because you're about to ramp things up, so what's on the menu right now? One of the first, because I'm assuming a lot of things are there. What's one of the first things on the menu coming up? Um, actually, we are doing a turkey drive. This is our third year doing a turkey drive. Turkey um, that drive, here in Cleveland? Here in Cleveland. And so um, there'll be a big announcement coming up about that in another couple weeks. We also are doing a Toys for Tots drive okay. that we will um, be getting that out in the next week. So these are our community outreach programs. Um, and so the rest of our year is really based and focused on um, volunteerism and community work and really um, ensuring that families and children are served during the holiday season when the need is greatest. And so um, that's where our focus will be in addition to ramping up and getting prepared for next year. So our annual meeting is always on uh, Martin Luther King Day. And so uh, past that, <coughs> uh, we are having an event in February to do a splash kickoff for our programming for the Interest to Income program. Okay. And so um, that'll be in February. So it'll be a, a fundraiser slash black history um, event. So you all had fundraisers already because I see something about Crazy mm -hmm. saying, you know, he wanted to invite people to a fundraiser. Have you had a, several so far or or mm -hmm. just one or two? And, and if so, you know, have they been successful? Did you get a significant amount or anything that you're looking towards to get? So yes, we've had a, uh, we did a celebrity chef event. Um, Celebrity and chef. <laughs> yeah. Where was I at? <laughs> I eat. Where was I at? Right. So uh, with Edwin's on Shaker Square. Okay. So um, we did a celebrity chef. So Cray uh, called, curated a menu of Cleveland food. So we had like Polish boys and. Cray you know, came up with a menu of Cleveland uh, food. Yeah, greens, uh -huh. collard greens. We had collard greens, macaroni and cheese, Polish boys, um, wings oh, with sauce. Yeah. So people, <laughs> so people came and, and and they paid or donated and then went into the coffin. Yes, and so um, uh, Tito's um, uh, was very gracious with the alcohol. And ah, the Tito's looked out. Yeah, Tito's. You know, y'all Tito's lovers, you know, I know a few of y'all, y'all be getting twisted off that, but that's enough with Tito's. <laughs> uh, so they were very uh, helpful with our Celebrity Chef event. Also, um, we had just had a meet and greet not too long ago, which was uh, August 2nd. So Cray was here up at uh, Academy Tavern on Larchmere. Okay. Yeah, so I uh, came out, and so we got a, a great response on that, and that was really a volunteer How did that come about? Up. Like, how w the people at Lodgeman said, hey, we would love to host you here with what you got going on, you know? Well, actually, Valerie McCall, who is um, former mayor Frank Jackson's chief of government. Kind of slim, slim lady, kind of tall. Uh uh, she oh, okay. uh, shorter than me, uh, oh, okay. brown skin, oh, okay. beautiful. So okay. um, she was uh, Frank Jackson's chief of intergovernmental affairs, and she also was uh, clerk of city council. And I think she was the youngest I member think I to met ever Valerie. be brown skin. Woman? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, maybe Everybody I'm saying she knows tall. Valerie she had them heels. I'm short, so maybe she was oh, tall. Oh, and she does wear heels and stuff, so yeah, she could have. Yeah. yeah, I met Valerie. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows the queen. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah she <laughs> is the queen, that's yeah. right. Okay, so that's you, so Craig was here for that. So he's hands-on. Yes, very. Very hands-on. Yeah. So, um, so what was some of the things, like, what was his, uh, like, what was, what was his demeanor like in, in, in the first couple of meetings and get down talking about this? Like, once, once he realized that he had a person in you that he could depend on and trust, and he's seen your vision, I'm assuming he got, he got, he got amped for it. Because it's, it's been a couple of years now, he hasn't stopped, hasn't given up, and you look mm -hmm. to do bigger things. So mm -hmm. he was amped. He was 
Yeah, yeah. so he amp. So it's like it's going to the, the you know, it's going yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> it's going up, up, up. So he's super excited. Uh Cray does a lot just anyway, you know, so he's a very um driven and accomplished person. Did uh lazy and flesh mother's passing affect him? in that thinking and stuff like you know because people get a purpose sometimes when major things happen in their lives and be it that they're close buddies and friends and even related you know um did he did you get that sense that he was uh, affected by that by the passing of lazy oh yeah flesh mother and maybe even got uh motivated and inspired yeah so uh well, he's always motivated and inspired. I don't know how he does all the stuff that he does. Yeah, he is a um, busy dude. Crazy, he is. He's he's the first mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but as far as being affected by um, Mama P's passing, yeah. uh, of course, all the guys were very affected because you know they all grew up together and went from household to household to household. So, really, yeah. each one of their parents and stuff was like another parent to them. Yeah. So yeah, they all were very affected by that. And especially the fans, because out of um, everyone's parents, like Mama P was like the most infamous, like all the fans know Mama, everybody know Mama P. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. I, we, we done met Mama P at the Agora. <laughs> when, when, when Bone Thugs did that thing at the Agora, we met Mama P there. You know, um, real quick, I know you gotta go. Um, if somebody wanted to patronize you all, maybe become a sponsor, help out, or even join a program, give them some information on how they can hook up with you all. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, you can hit right. me up. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, call player T. He got me. He can get me. That's right. So, right. He can get you. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So, um, um, those who are interested in getting involved, even um, coming out to volunteer, you know, or to donate, can reach us at our website, which is spreadthelove.oh, as in Ohio, dot com. And also our Instagram and Facebook is also the same handle, um, spreadthelove.oh, for everything. Now, real quick, um, OC, um, sp speak to the young man, young woman. That, that that's creative, that's rappers, that's artists, and, and they need something like this and don't know nothing about it, you know, give them some words of encouragement right now. So um, if I had any words of encouragement to uh, our young creatives is to follow your passion. Yeah. Do what makes you happy and understand don't chase money chase your passion. When you chase what you are passionate about, you will naturally come to do what you need to do because solely because you love it. So not because money is involved. And when you do stuff because you love it, you're gonna become the best. When you become the best, that's when the bag comes. So you won't have to chase the bag, the bag will be chasing you. Great advice. Give it up for O.C. Made Neal. Spread the Love Foundation. Play a T that's me, Hollywood in the hood.